Greetings, Game Cola faithful, and welcome to a very special episode of the Game Cola podcast. Today we have, if you guys can introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is uh, Chris Senefani, but you may have heard of me uh, as Axe or Superfan Axe throughout the Game Cola podcast in the past. Uh, my name is Blue Rider, and I've been a fan for many years. <laughs> And I am John Rizzi. I have been on, I am a staff member on Game Cola, and I'm the only staff member on this podcast right now. Today is a very special episode, not only because we have two of our best super fans here, but also we are talking about the new recently released Marvel's Avengers, published by Square Enix and developed by Crystal Dynamics. I hear you two are big fans of the Marvel brand, as am I. Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> Wonderful. You guys have been playing this game a lot, and you two seem to enjoy it. Um, I personally have been very on the fence about it because it has a lot. It has a lot of uh, games as a service, like uh, tropes, like Destiny or The Division and stuff like that. That kind of turned me off from it. But I have played the beta, and I did have fun, but it did not convince me to buy the game. What are your guys' takes on that? So, uh, I was gonna say this. It hasn't really been hitting me in the face yet. Um, I have to admit that this is one of my first uh, games as a service that I've played. Um, the closest thing I've had before this was uh, Monster Hunter World and uh, the expansion Iceborne, um, mm-hmm. which did a very similar method. Which was um, all of the gameplay stuff was free, but they had a lot of cosmetic stuff that um, was for a price that, to be honest, didn't really interest me. Like okay, I could have a new uh, type of dance or a new gesture, and I, don't know, I wasn't going to spend real-world money on that. I'm fine with my yeah. uh, my weapons and armor. <laughs> <laughs> Off the top of my head, I can't really think of any games-as-a-service games that I really am a part of. Um, I guess I, I played Marvel Heroes a lot when that was a thing, yeah. and I just yeah, made I myself really sad. Uh that was this probably my favorite game of all time. Whenever I was down, I would turn that on and just play for a few hours. And uh, Because I loved Diablo, and that was mm. essentially Diablo with the Marvel skin, which is like the best game I could ever <laughs> ask for, <laughs> personally. And so this has been the closest to anything... Like, in the sense of scratching that itch. Uh, and so it's it's very special to me in that sense. Aww. Yeah, no, I get you there. I uh, There's been a couple Marvel games along the way, but you're right, in the past decade, they've all either been, like, phone games or something smaller, and the idea of that big AAA adventure ex- uh, Avengers experience has kind of been uh, something that I think a lot of us have been looking for. Yeah, like the Lego games are great, but they're there's not like they're Lego games combat, yeah. <laughs> the, like depth to. I'm glad I have like a com like a system of where combat just gets better and better and is different for each person depending on like your play style. I that's I love RPGs and games like that and nice. So. Yeah, just jumping off what you said, um, yeah, it's funny, I've gone through waves with this, where when I first started, I thought I was going to be a little disappointed, because they had been selling it on, wow, these characters play so different, and the first two characters that you get extended time with are the Hulk and Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel, who, in the very beginning, are kind of similar, they're both very melee-oriented, they're two of the tougher Avengers, um, but... Yeah, as you level up, you find these subtle differences in what each one can do. Um, I mean, just right off the bat, Hulk, um, everybody has a support ability, and Hulk's is like the classic RPG tank. He can basically start pounding the ground, he gets extra angry, and it makes his defense go up, and it makes uh, enemies turn towards you rather than your allies. And then Kamala has um, a, a willpower booster. This is one of those modern games that doesn't want to use RPG terms, so uh, <laughs> willpower is health, so when the Black Widow gets hit by, say, a rocket launcher, she's losing willpower. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I like that from the standpoint of 
in comic books, uh, your character is as strong as the writer lets them be. So you are the writer and you're managing their willpower. It's very much the same as with Spider-Man PS4. I loved the, you press the up on the D-pad and it refills health based on how well you're doing in combat. And I thought that was an amazing thematic transition of that idea of superpowers or superhumans being invincible or very weak depending on who's writing the story i haven't played spider-man that sounds like a really cool concept it i love it some people thought it was stupid because i i guess they didn't make the same connection i did but i that just instantly clicked for me yeah, yeah, to be honest, I'm, I'm a big fan of that game too, and I never I never really thought about it that way. It's a very interesting way to look at it. I'm a big I'm a big narrative guy. So, um the games I play, it's typically like single player campaign uh stuff oriented. I don't really do too much multiplayer stuff, and when I do, it's on, it's with like casual games like Minecraft or uh, stuff like that. I like more local multiplayer than I do online multiplayer. How's the campaign in this game? to pique my curiosity because that's the part i'm mainly interested in um as for the story it's um it's nice it's touching it's a marvel comic story it's they it's definitely a marvel game where they put the story first and the story segments are pretty stand out usually is in the level design in the way the characters interact uh actually uh the beta started with This one tutorial and then the actual real game uh, starts with a slightly different tutorial and it is so charming. It it just blew my mind. Oh, can you go in a little more detail? I I think that was, I mean, the game's already out so people know what you're talking about and I don't really care about, (laughs) I'm not a big spoiler (laughs) spoiler guy. So so, don't uh, be afraid to go into more detail if you want, if you don't want to. So the main character of the campaign, Ms. Marvel, Kamala Khan, is being uh, brought to a day as a VIP guest because she wrote she is one of the top uh, contestants in the Avengers fanfic contest that they have going on, and so a day is this like huge Avengers convention where there's like games and. Uh, avengers style food like there's a food <laughs> vendor that's like widow bites and stuff like that it's it's awesome Tony Stark it's... gift shop which i would yes. shop at, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh the first thing i did in this game was turn to my right and go up to this uh little this little game and uh she puts on this uh widow bite uh bracelet i can't remember the real technical marvel term for black widow's uh widow bite bracelet shooter thingy but she puts on one of those and it's for like this little holographic shooting gallery game which actually teaches you how you use projectile attacks later on in the game but it Mm. is adorable and charming and Kamala is loving it, and I'm loving her loving it. And uh. yeah, her being the main character of the campaign was really a, a great move. I'm a big fan of the character. I'm glad that she's getting a some mainstream exposure. And also, I mean, I, we'll probably get into this in a little bit, but the fact that she hasn't been in the MCU has been a plus because mm. um, with the whole strange thing with the likenesses, you know, you're looking at these faces, going, "That's not the face I know." But with her, you don't have that yet, so. As far as I'm concerned, when I look at her, that's Kamala Khan. That's Ms. Yes, Marvel for that, now. Um, that is such yeah. a good point. Um, like, some of the controversy when this game was announced was people not liking the way they looked because they're not the MCU. They didn't pay extra for Robert Downey Jr. They're being lazy, <laughs> which is not, a, not an argument I agree with. I don't think creating a distinct version of an established character that usually brings something amazing around like if batman arkham had not had had to have had its um i mean it had kevin conroy i guess but i get what you're saying yeah it does have christian bale's voice christian bale's face and voice yeah being allowed to have 
go somewhere fresh with these characters that people love is not always a bad thing. Sometimes you mess it up, but sometimes you create something amazing. Heath Ledger, if Heath Ledger had not been allowed to do what he did, that would suck. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, I do remember when the uh, game came out, people were complaining. It's like, oh, it's not MCU related? What's what's the point? I was like, the point is to play as the characters, not the actors. Yeah. <laughs> first, yeah. of all, first of all, it's like the characters, are, the characters have been around way longer than the actors have. <laughs> To be perfectly honest. <laughs> the, the one point but, I'll give uh, them, though, yeah. from that is I was looking back, so it got me thinking about all the different games I've played, and just the idea of this like kind of realistic art style, but with new faces, because in the past, they just didn't have the technology to be that mm-hmm. realistic. Like I, I know, John, yeah, you've true. been saying you played Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, which came out last year. Uh, Blue, have you played yeah. Marvel Ultimate yeah. Alliance 7? Oh yeah, I uh, power leveled uh, my Ms. Marvel to level 300 Ooh. because she is the most overpowered character in that game. She was one of my <laughs> and I have mainstays too. More than Phoenix? Yes, actually. She has this <laughs> spin to win attack that it just like AoE and lots of damage and it's wonderful, but doesn't make <laughs> much sense. Isn't it literally called like giant foot spinny thing or something? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, that is accurate. I remember the young kids have that very like meta names, like uh, Gwen Stacy, who I'm pretty sure is my daughter's favorite, um, has a move literally called like Insert Cool Name Here. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> and then you have like Iron Man, who you know his idea of cool is a little less fourth wall breaking. So all of his are big technology names, you know, Photon Blast, Unibeam. <laughs> Photon Cannon. I think it would also be fitting if he named them after like Black Sabbath songs yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yes, that that is a lot to do with the Avengers. They bring a lot of all that Tony being cool into the game. Oh my god! When you first <laughs> when you were talking about a day, because there's there's things I I admit as as Tony's hands down my favorite. I'm a huge Tony fan. I I'm literally sitting here in Avengers pajama pants and an Arc Reactor t-shirt because I thought it would be thematically appropriate tonight. And um, so <laughs> there's there's little nods well, now where... I feel... What's that? Now I feel underdressed. <laughs> where, what do I have? I have my Rocket Raccoon Funko Pop because no one else makes a good Rocket Raccoon. I need a I have really... my Spidey comics on the dresser over there. That's all I got. <laughs> I have the Marvel Encyclopedia beside me. Does that help? <laughs> That's cool. I, I'll take it. I uh. I want a really good movie accurate Rocket Raccoon plush. That would be great. Would be I awesome. would love it forever. <laughs> but no one makes those, so I have to settle but for yeah, fun. Yeah, with the uh, him in a day, it was funny because um early on or when you first meet him, he's one of the only Avengers that Kamala doesn't have these one on one, like heart to heart sweat. Um, she right. crosses paths with everyone. Um, she sees Bruce, but she doesn't really have a conversation with him, which is funny because I feel like he's the one who's most her mentor throughout the game because he knows her the longest. Yes. But um, yeah, everybody else has these nice, you know, one on one. Oh, good spirit kid. And Tony's just making when this big Thor flash. shows up. Yeah. <laughs> Thor's is fantastic. Um, but you're right. Caps is what you it's would expect. So adorable. Um, and then Black Widow's is kind of cute, too. Yeah, and then Tony's is, he's basically coming in doing finger guns over a, another guy's speech, who, as the viewer, we know it's kind of okay, because the guy's a jerk, that he's, you know, completely showing him <laughs> up, and then, you know, backflips onto the stage to rock you like a hurricane, I believe. <laughs> It's funny you brought up uh, Ultimate Alliance earlier because that was a series of games that actually introduced me to Marvel. I mean, I I mean, one of the first movies I saw in theaters was the original Spider Man, so I was always a casual Spider Man fan. Mm-hmm. But then, I don't. Know, when did Ultimate Alliance One come out? Like two thousand six, uh, two thousand five or six? Yeah, okay. college. Uh, yeah, come... you played it in college. Really? Oh, so much older uh, than you guys now. Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I'm young. So <laughs> I was, I'm I was young, from the so X Men era, so you figure when I was growing up, the Avengers weren't even cool to be honest. It was the X Men that everybody mm-hmm. liked. So it was really Yeah, that's true. It wasn't I Cap or that. Iron Man, it was like Wolverine or Gambit, basically, when I was growing yeah. up. That was back when Iron Man was like a C list hero from yeah. Marvel basically. Yeah. <laughs> he was he was a very serious guy who kind of looked like Riker from Star Trek and Every time you would show up, you would do, I am Iron Man in some form. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that original game 
come 2005, it was like, it's like, here's a game with Spider-Man in it. And it's like, who are all these 5,000 other heroes <laughs> with him? And it's like, I knew Daredevil. I was like, also a Daredevil fan also, because he had a movie, he had a movie too. I love the Ultimate Alliance games, especially like the first one, because it is just so unapologetically just comic booky. It does yeah, not really yes. hold your hand. It exists in the Marvel Universe, and you are along for the ride, and it is going to show you things that you probably didn't know about. And before there was Ultimate Alliance, did it, either of you guys play the X-Men Legends games? Yes. yes, I played oh, okay. the. Uh, say, yeah, I played the GameCube. I played the GameCube version of one and the PC version of two. I don't remember what I played them on. It was probably whatever the Nintendo systems were. So I still remember finishing the main story and then trying to start New Game Plus and it not being an option and just being like, wait, didn't I just unlock Psylocke like a level ago? And... <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, that was. I was very disappointed. My in memory of X-Men Legends was that the characters weren't very balanced. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. I remember being on a team and it was like one friend was Cyclops, one friend was Storm, and I was Wolverine. <laughs> and I just remember like Cyclops, once you leveled him up, could like fire beams through the walls. Storm <laughs> had this ridiculous chain lightning that would really clear the level. So I could not even get to things. Here comes little Wolverine like running at the enemy, and by the time he gets to them, they're already like yawned, toasted. Yeah. yeah. If they add Wolverine to this Avengers game, well, what projectile will he have? <laughs> I was thinking that, yeah, because I would love Wolverine to be in this, but you're right, he doesn't have a projectile. He'd have to like. Throw I was a thinking knife or something. <laughs> Because, you know, uh, like, different characters' projectiles are not as long as mm -hmm. everyone's. They're not all super long. So I was thinking he could scrape his claws against each other and be, like, mid-range sparks against, like, someone's Almost face. Almost like a shotgun them. kind of blast, like, something. That's yeah. interesting. Or, um, do you remember the old arcade game, like, with Nightcrawler and Colossus? I mean, if we're really reading... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, you could he just had a do, special... like, slashes that make waves, but, I mean, I feel like that would be silly. Yeah, he had a special move that had, like, electrical <laughs> shocks. Yeah, that. he's his own projectile. <laughs> Actually, if we want to jump subjects real quick, just, yeah, the different people. I have the list if we want to read who people think is going to be in it, but, like you were saying, I was thinking, too, the people we would love to see in it, and... Wolverine's my favorite character not in this game, but like you said, he, everybody needs to have a form of transportation, I realized, and a projectile. Yeah. Like, I imagine most, like, ninja spy people are gonna... Like, I'm curious to see how Hawkeye moves in this game, because he'll probably get the grappling hook, I feel like, like Widow, but, yeah, they're, the... but they're going with this younger, more comic Hawkeye. I could see him having a very acrobatic style, so you could have that double jump like Cap, but like... I mean, he was know, like, he, the circus, so... Yeah, Wolverine, I'd, I'd give him benefit of the doubt, just give him the jumps, like, um, what was that? If you ever played the X-Men Origins Wolverine game, which did yeah. have the likeness of you, Jackman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Side note. <laughs> yeah, um, he had, like, a pounce button, because if you remember in that movie, every time he got in a fight, it felt like he would, like, jump 20 feet in the air and do yeah. this, like, big yeah. arc onto everyone. So they made it a gameplay mechanic, but that was just, like, is someone shooting at you? Like, fly! Or they him. could... Maybe they could, like, combine that with his projectile. They could make his pounce, his projectile, and you could use it for a mode of transportation. Uh, yeah. Kind of like how Widow can um, grappling hook onto the um, the drones. Because I was wondering that going yeah. in. Like, the aerial character... Because, yeah, Ms. Marvel, you figure if something's up in the air, she can reach out and punch it. The flyers can fly to things. And then, yeah, everybody has their projectile. But you're right, I was curious to see with Widow would I just have to stand there and shoot handguns at things, but... No, they let you um, grapple onto things and then start kicking them. Yeah, so he could pounce and then, like, get his claws in walls and, like, climb across and yeah, fix his yeah, two I think problems at once. climbing could be a new thing. So I think climbing, I could see also with uh, uh, Black Panther. I feel like he could... Oh, yeah, Spider-Man, definitely. I figure uh, Ms. Marvel <laughs> and yes. Black Widow have that s uh, swinging maneuver. You figure that's pretty much what Spider-Man does. Mm -hmm. Black Panther, I could definitely see, because they do a, um, what would you call that? Like, they can stick to walls for, like, a second, like, if you kind of don't climb up the wall just right, like, they'll, like, hold it for a second. Yeah. And usually you can get another, like, Ms. Marvel will, like, stick to the wall, and then if you're just short, like, you can kind of get her to, like, throw her arm up and catch herself. Um, I could see, yeah, maybe, like, if Black Panther and Wolverine get it, well, 
Black Panther, I'm pretty sure it's a certainty at this point. Um, I could see him having, like, a, you know, you get three of those or something. So, like, you could, like, hop, hop, hop up a wall. I'm pretty sure Wolverine had something like that in a re- in in, a, in one of his games, too, where he can just, like, crawl. Uh, he can actually just claw. Stick his claws wall. in the wall yeah. and just climb up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's always, it's interesting. I, when I was playing the beta, I, ha- I was thinking about what would Spider-Man's moveset be because he definitely would not control like he does in the uh, Insomniac game. I just want to know, like, how would he, how would they do the swinging? Would it just be, would he just be more acrobatic based where he can I... just like bounce off of walls and, and punch people and just like, and do web attacks? Would it be like Iron Man flying where you do, where you, all you have to do is do a double jump and he'll automatically start swinging? Uh, and maybe do the off-screen I... magic. I'm actually very interested in that because uh, in the dev uh, release that I saw, they actually referenced, uh, because a lot of the game takes place in like icy tundra or a forest or places where swinging is not really an option. And so in this, uh, when they revealed that they were going to add Spider-Man, they specifically mentioned like this comic where he has to chase after a villain or travel and there are no real places to swing from around and he has to figure out how to do that. So I think they're going to do stuff like the Kamala and Black Widow swinging, but I think they're going to find a lot of ways to, like, flesh that out or, like, expand upon it in a huge way. At least that's what I'm hoping for Mm because in every game the web swinging is like his main mode of transportation but i think this is actually a really neat opportunity to do something entirely new with all his like web zipping and just just find new ingenious ways for peter parker (laughs) to be like hey i'm a smart guy this is a situation and i am going to adapt because that's what spider-man does he wins every time he has like (laughs) the highest win to loss ratio of any comic book character because he is not necessarily batman smart but he still generally outsmarts his villains and i i think this is just a great opportunity to let that shine and i hope they don't let that fall through i I was thinking maybe he could just like hop on the hulk's back (laughs) <laughs> just like jump, <laughs> jump around a few, whatnot, or um, web slingshot himself around all, all over the place. That would be fun. That'd be funny yeah. to use other people there, right? Like if you could actually like go for a ride on like Thor. <laughs> I mean, you could say the same thing for like Black Widow. Why doesn't she grapple onto like <laughs> Iron Man's leg while he's flying? Oh, I feel like in this one it would be <laughs> Thor. That would be maybe, cool. Maybe <laughs> maybe they'll add that a mechanic in like yeah. a few years. Yeah. When I played when I played the beta, that was honestly one thing I was kind of bummed about that I wasn't able to do was a bunch of team up attacks, like a la like yeah. Ultimate Alliance two, like with their fusion attacks. It's like, oh man, I would love to like be Iron Man and then trigger a repulsor to cap shield and it would go all around the room or something yeah. like yeah. that. There are that was disappointing to me, but there are also a lot of uh, just, like, organic team-up moves that I didn't really ever think of. Like, I don't know, uh, you can some guy is... Some, <laughs> some guy is about to interrupt your Hulk's big attack, and so Captain America throws the shield at their legs, and they flop down face-first right in front of the Hulk's fists as he <laughs> pounds the ground. Okay, so it's like a lot of indirect like team up moves, no like specific animations. I, if and that's stuff like how that. you want to put it, then yes, but it still feels yeah, rewarding and interesting. Oh not yeah, I... quite as it's not the same, but it's also rewarding in a different way. I still hope like someday they'll add some sort of actual team up moves, but for now this is not. It could have not had this, and I it would have been a lot worse off. And so they're doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely had I definitely had moments like that in the beta where I was where I was like Hulk or Kamala Khan, and I like stunned an enemy, and then I saw yeah. the the person playing Black Widow next to me was just shooting him shooting him up while he was stunned. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was fun. That was fun. It's like it's indirect. They're indirect team up moves, but it's like it's just like opportunities you can take with. The gameplay mechanics right um the closest thing i was thinking too was with the the tanks um 
So you probably saw those, um, what they call them, the takedowns. Like, you raise the enemy's stun meter, and then you can do a more cinematic move that gets you some health back on the, like, I guess called spider tanks. The things, like, with legs. Um, spider? I heard spider? Uh, yeah, right? Um, <laughs> uh, they When they get stunned, you can do a triangle circle, one of these, like, special moves. But then sometimes it'll give other teammates the opportunity to join in as well. And then you just see, like... You know, Kamala's getting big and, like, stepping on it. Hulk's, like, mm. ripping its leg off and beating it with it. Iron <laughs> Man can, like, fl- do a drive-by with lasers. All at the same time to the same uh, enemy. I did appreciate how, while everyone did seem to have similar movesets, like light attack, heavy attack, uh, lock-on projectile, oh, and, what, and and whatnot, um, I do appreciate how different everyone felt um yes. captain america was the most fun to me even though i only played the beta you only played as him for like seven minutes yes. <laughs> but as like i still i still thought it was re- very fun to play as him and i ca- and i kind of want to get the game right now just so i could play as him it, like he if, is I, if I a was. lot of fun like yeah. oh i i unlocked like this combo with his shield where you throw it and then it hit someone you catch it then you throw it again and it's a new throw move and then it hits and comes back and then you catch it and then you throw it and it's a finisher it's so it's an actual combo but it's just with his yeah and then there's also like a secondary version of that where you charge it up and target a bunch of enemies and so it hits them all and comes back and then you kick it back and it hits them all again (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. It it is amazing. Um, um, when I played as Black Widow, it felt honest to God, it felt like I was playing more of like an old school Tomb Raider game. If you've ever played any of those, it was just, just felt like a lot. I like, could see that. Yeah, like not more, more with the acrobatics, but yeah, it was very fun. I personally have not played any Tomb Raider games, but I do love playing as Black Widow. I love playing <laughs> all of the characters. Like, I thought, okay, I'm going to really like Kamala Khan and, I don't know, Thor, Iron Man. Ken- I'm going to like them all, but I'm probably going to like someone like Hulk the least. And then I played the beta, and I loved everyone more than I thought I would. And, like, there's so much depth and i was constantly like figuring out oh this is how this character works i've been playing this character wrong the entire time Mm. and yeah that happens to me a lot yeah it just for hours on end it's constant oh i've completely relearned this game with this character and i will approach every situation much differently now and then it's it's just constantly that and it's amazing i was just in shock basically the first day i was playing the game <laughs> you know it's been good for me too are these daily challenges yes yeah. um not that i can play every day but um when i go in each character has what is it two daily and two weekly challenges yes and um they usually kind of hint at trying something different or something specific so like today's iron man ones for me where um one was i was vault over people and then beat them up which i kind of was doing so that wasn't a big stretch but then the other one was not to beat enemies in the air but in flight so like oh yeah actually jetting Mm -hmm. forward because i was used to going up in the air especially with like punchy guys and being like a laser for you a missile for you (laughs) like just kind of hovering above yeah that's the Um, so i'm kind of the opposite of you where i absolutely love like full on sprint flying straight up to someone and taking them out. Nice and yeah, that's what I had to learn to do today was That is um, cool. I I like yeah. it in big rooms with turrets, yeah. That's very I, cool. Yeah. The way you guys are describing this is uh it seems like the mechanics, the way the characters work, it seems very similar to uh what's a good example? I'd say like a fighting game. Like say yeah. well, say like Marvel vs. Capcom where Every character plays differently, and they have their own set of animations and whatnot. But like every move you do puts the opponent in a different position, and you have to figure out what other move you can do you to do it to continue the combo. And meanwhile, yeah, I think that's... with those with, with those games, it kind of locks you into a certain set of moves for every char- for every character. Yeah, I but would the, say but... this is like that, but less limited in a sense, okay. actually. Okay, but that yeah. is I I like that analogy. Yeah. 
and I it's disappointing to like hear people be like, oh, every character controls the same because like in no game ever do you have multiple playable characters and their button mapping is completely different what do you what do you want what did you expect i don't i would say that's a very general way of looking at it and to and to an extent they're not wrong but also yes. to another extent they kind of they kind of are i mean yes i'm trying to play devil's advocate here. i'm trying to play both, <laughs> yeah. both no, no, I, I hear you. um the example and i know i keep going to it just because it's like my favorite game probably of the past couple of years, but um, uh, in Monster Hunter, each weapon has its own completely different move set, and right. um, the buttons are a little different there. And you're right, there's like big, you know, slow stuff that hits hard. There's fast stuff that you know goes fast. I like a defensive weapon. I use a lance and a shield where you know I can block better than anyone. There's even like bows and arrows. Yeah, so and then there's the, the insect glaive that lets you yeah. flip in the air, shoot a bug, and then become. <laughs> Yeah, Kung Fu Master. Um, that maybe would be like the... If you're talking about the bar of things playing wildly different, and I mean, just because I'm in the late game of that, that they're so different that I have to like... I would have to really like relearn things. Whereas with this, yes, the characters are different, but yeah, if I played Iron Man for, you know, a week, yeah, and then, you know, I go into a mission and it's like, oh, my friend is Iron Man, I have to pick someone else. You know, they're going to be lower level, but I don't have to be like... Uh, how does cap work? L two R two like <laughs> you're gonna be super good at Iron Man, but you're also not like deficient in the other characters, and I I don't see that as a problem. Yeah, no, you're right. It's definitely not. It's not a problem. It's like if you learn one character, you'll understand the basics of another character pretty well, but you won't yeah. know yeah. their in depth. You won't like throwing cap shield won't be the same as uh, <laughs> playing using Black Iron Man's Widow missiles. and playing Hulk are. <laughs> Are very different experiences. Yes, Hulk is a tank that he, his oh, I was just floored with his give and take resource management yeah. mechanic, which I was I was explaining it to a friend of mine, and he was like, "That sounds good enough to like carry a game on its own." And I was like, "Right, this there, there's so much." like care put into this game and i don't know you're right nick kind of balanced because i was wondering on a similar note like how do you make a character like that not feel invincible mm -hmm. and you're right it's it, give and take is the perfect way to put it and again it comes back to that comic book idea of this character can take as much damage the hulk can get beat up by everyone and still be fine if you're doing it right we kind of touched on the uh the the past games when we were talking about likenesses um and i have the i do have the list of who people think are coming i don't know if any of that would help oh yeah that that's actually what i wanted to talk about it's like who who do you want to, okay. who do you want to see next and who oh been okay so, so um that's that's a very in-depth question oh goodness okay so there's there's like the list of characters that I know slash are very likely to be in the game, and then there's the list of characters that are Avengers that could fit in the game, and then there are Avengers that are not that are obscure and aren't thought of as Avengers, and then there's just wider Marvel Universe characters. Because recently the devs said they do have free reign across the Marvel Universe, the characters they add. <laughs> don't necessarily have to have the Avengers title attached to them. So okay. before I heard that, I thought it was like just Avengers characters, but it's not yeah. all Avengers that you immediately think of. Like uh, once or twice Sandman, the Spider-Man villain, has actually been an honorary Avenger. So I was like, okay, he oh. could be technically a candidate but then very te very technically sweet. how funny would that be he got in the game before like black panther did or something like that <laughs> sandman who was performed for like two issues is a yeah. playable character <laughs> i am i'm a fan of like mostly like obscure comic book characters like uh, I don't know, uh, 3D Man is interesting because <laughs> he's never in anything. Slapstick is a Marvel character that I really like that is in, like, nothing. And... I will say this about 3D Man, though. A friend of mine has a comic collection, and he had a few of his comics, and I was very disappointed <laughs> they were not in 3D. 
<laughs> That's all I'm saying. My, uh, my strange entrant, I wish he was in the X-Men Legend games, because I think he would have been crazy. Um, I don't know if he would really be a good fit here. Jamie Madrox, multiple man. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes. I think a good multi- playable multiple man would be crazy, because you could just do, like, how does he double jump? He makes a second one, get to where he needs to be. Um, yeah. I, just that, things like that. Yeah. His ultimate would just be, I forget, it was in an X-Factor comic where he was basically like trapped in a room or something and he basically slapped himself until he made so many of himself that he like <laughs> filled the entire room. Yeah. I mean, I, I can just see crazy ideas with a guy who can clone and then make the clones disappear. I mean, yeah, you, you yeah. know, you could see like karate combos where he's kicking you and then a second one of him comes out from the side and it's not necessarily teleportation. Like, right, exactly. That's uh, that's something I always like wanted. Uh, it's like a, a multiplying character that uses it to teleport but not really and but yeah. nobody i don't think i've ever seen that used once and it like i've seen like oh i'll get a clone to throw me in the air or something but they don't like oh i'll make a huge line of clones and then send my consciousness to the one at the end or whatever yeah hmm. yeah it's anyways awesome. i just i love obscure characters with very unique powers like slapstick is great he's a living cartoon character he can pull out things from hammer space and also he is like stretchy and immune to damage and brings everything you can think of in a comic book character or like a cartoon classic slapstick cartoon character i remember reading through like my marvel encyclopedia and like the dc encyclopedia and everyone had enhanced strength and superhuman senses and i was like this is i've read this for the thousandth time why does everyone have this get sentry on out of here <laughs> oh jeez can you imagine if they added sentry that would be our like surprise edition <laughs> oh my god as i was saying that i literally opened up to a random page and got hulkling who has shape-shifting superhuman strength and healing so but he's something what is he he's like part scroll i think he's kree and scroll that's it he's a half kree uh, half but... scroll which could kind of fit into this plot <laughs> Here's another one. Gremlin battle suit gave superhuman strength. I can just flip to a random yeah. page, and the first character I look at has superhuman, superhuman strength, strength and usually strength. enhanced durability. I feel like that's a common phrase whenever you're writing. Superhuman senses. I just went to. Oh, that's Dak, and of course he has those. <laughs> but like, every page seems to have a character that has one of those three things. Doctor Strange could be fun. I feel like. Yes. Oh, man, if yes. they could do like a uh, portal with him or something, like I could see his support ability being something like I don't know, something with like maybe he could set up like yeah, like a a portal or he could move allies like I really do wanna see how creative they get with um are we allowed you said like earlier, like the game is out and you don't care about spoilers, but like these like post game data leak spoilers how are we on uh, those they are publicly available but i know there are some people that just want to know like what what are confirmed so far so i think i think if we just stick okay. with confirmations and speculate Does... speculations that <laughs> okay. Would be cool. okay so we have kate bishop and clint barton and i and don't know PlayStation. if you oh spider-man and, and Black if you Panther. They, re- they revealed i mean if you they did they technically didn't say Black Panther is going to be playable, but you know. <laughs> I figure, again, I just... even if we're not talking, like, leaks and rumors, yeah, I mean, just the future of Marvel is Black Panther, Captain like Marvel, Like, they showed Spider-Man. his... I knew that, just looking at these characters I... without anyone. Yeah, saying. can we add Captain Marvel to the confirmed oh, yes, list? Like, She's she is A-lister. not at They're all, not gonna but... make this game without her. Any character that has had a movie so far is practically confirmed <laughs> you can have a game with ms marvel and then not have captain marvel they allude to her a lot yeah. <laughs> yeah there's plenty of artwork of her in the game in the game also so i think that's already like step one okay. <laughs> as yeah. to confirm. i guess i i won't uh talk about any of the leaked ones that i know are like 90 percent likely to get in the game right there's a key npc who yes that is uh, a bit iffy because of legacy like hero yeah i was gonna say yeah legacy heroes are a thing and i mean ms marvel captain marvel right the, yeah 
they have to meet at this point, I think, after the whole adventure she's been on. You guys remember when Carol Danvers went by Ms. Marvel? I yeah. do. I <laughs> it always confuses me. I, re- I, rem- I remember seven or eight years ago, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to... <laughs> I want to look something up about a character, and then I'm like, I look up like Ms. Marvel, and then I get multiple like things on Google, yeah. and I'm like, right, I know the name Kamala Khan, just look up Kamala Khan, or I know the name Carol Danvers, Carol Danvers. just look up Carol Danvers, save yourself the extra ten seconds. I know Miles Morales, I'll just look him up. I know, <laughs> I know <laughs> Spider Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara, I'll look him up. <laughs> Wasn't he spy hyphen D or something they were trying at one point? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, that, they, did they were try trying that. to come up we... with a branded name for uh, <laughs> Miles that we weren't like Spider-Man and, you know, Spider-Man, the other Spider-Man, no, <laughs> Spider-Man. I know they changed Spider-Gwen to Ghost Spider in the comics. Ghost yes, Spider, I yeah. do like Ghost Spider personally, because it's not only a nod to another, to Ghost Rider, but it is also just like... A kind of cool thing, and she is now known for traveling between dimensions, so that's like yeah. disappearing, teleporting. Yeah, sort it, of that is a ghost cute name. spider. I also just really like her costume. They did a good job really designing cool. it. It is a thing. very neat design, very unique. Sometimes I stop and think, and I'm like, if they want to add a new superhero, how are they going to add their costume and not be like generic or just super stupid? And then. Ghost Spider came out, and it was like, wow, the people, designers are real. There are artists. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, I bet, th- I, I honestly <laughs> gotta believe that's a dilemma every comic, every comic artist goes through. It's like, god damn, what are they gonna look like now? It's only like the 3,000th hero I'm working on. There's only three primary <laughs> colors. <laughs> Everybody's red and blue. There's a few blue and yellow guys, yes. and now the re- there's the red and yellow guys. That's it. That's all the combination. What color haven't we used yet? White. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> With the pink highlights, though, that's that's cool. And yeah, I kind of mentioned it at the beginning that there's these shows for little kids called uh, Marvel Superhero Adventures, mm-hmm. and that's kind of been my kid's start to them. And that's it was funny because yeah, I was kind of hoping that my daughter would get into. Ms. Marvel, but if anything, it seems like she's gravitating. Her favorite, at least in that show, is um, Ghost Spider. Mm. Aww. And then it's funny, because my other weird, I'm a dad, but I'm also a gamer moment, is um, Marvel's Avengers has this big voice cast, um, and a couple of the people I know, um, if you listen to Critical Role, um, they're yeah. on that. Um, Black Widow is Laura Bailey, who's also Black Widow in the Marvel Ultimate Alliance game. And she's and married to the guy who does who Thor, plays Thor. And- I think he's been Thor for the last, like, decade and, like, pretty everything, much. He's hasn't pretty he? Pretty much got the role locked down, yeah. He's been Thor in, in just about any animated adaptation. Although, to me, he will always be Sophia the First's father. But, right. <laughs> but um... <laughs> oh, the other interesting one is Hulk. Um, so, it's Troy Baker, who was Snow in Final Fantasy XIII... Um, he's also and Batman. He's usually Hawkeye in a lot. Yeah, he's um, no, he he wasn't Batman, was he? I thought he was. Um... He was Batman in um, in an animated movie, and he also. Oh, oh, okay. oh no, he also played him in the uh, Telltale series. Oh. Okay, because I think he was Two Face, or he was one of the villains yes. in the Arkham games. But um, he's often Hawkeye in the cartoon. Troy Baker just like throw out a name, and he there's like a. F- 45% chance he's been that character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. He also played the Joker in um, Arkham Origins. <laughs> well, there you go. Wow. But yeah, I really enjoy his um, Bruce. It's funny because some of the better scenes early on in the game are... Um, it seems like they've moved a lot of the roles around like compared to their MCU counterparts. And in this case, the fact that whereas in the movies, Tony became the father figure to Peter Parker. Right, right. In this... Tony's more like a cool older brother to Kamala. Or like that uncle, nice that hearts. cool uncle who's bad influence uncle, but it's used yeah, to like exactly. him. Yeah, uh, exactly. Whereas... But um, Bruce is like the real mentor, but he's so awkward in a few points. Like there's a scene where I he first think, introduces yeah. her to the Chimera, <laughs> and he's just like, this is your room, kid. Hey, I'm gonna go I'm gonna science go. now. And, <laughs> and then Later. she like starts crying, and yeah. he's like, oh no, I don't know what to How do. do. I people? 
and it's it's wonderful because it's because it's a father daughter relationship dynamic, but it's also different from her actual dad who is in the game, and so and it's he's the best cast character in the whole game. I'm yeah. sorry, but <laughs> I, if you see yeah, the actor is... and you've seen him in the comics, dead on, one hundred percent. I want him to be in the MCU TV show, like. I I just I like that uh, we have her and her dad, and then we also have her with Bruce, and that'll be completely different dynamics. But you still feel like the father figure sort of dynamic, and it's very yeah. interesting. I don't know if I can think of anything off the top of my head that has exactly or something quite like that. I will say that w- regarding the voice cast, I think the only one that bothered me personally was, and you're gonna hate me, hate me, Chris, but it it was oh, no, I it was Nolan North as Iron Man yes. because i honestly no, I agree with you. I agree because I just hear Deadpool or Rocky yeah. Raccoon or Nathan Drake or any of the other million. So I agree with you, but I will say, um, in the campaign, he grew on me a little bit. I don't like him out in the field because mm-hmm. you're right; he does that. He does his Deadpool voice a lot with his one-liners, but it's um, mainly in his yelling know. voice. I hear it. Yes, it's his definitely. yelling. Yes, he he turns into I don't know what you call that. It's like guttural. Like it always makes me think of yeah. you know, Jerry the King Lawler is. It's, and by the way, it's Deadpool do about to, to stab joke. someone or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And but yeah, in the in the campaign, he has some like moments where it's like, oh, I I like this. This is a good choice. But then there's him being a, every character he's ever played and it's just like oh no that's the thing i don't think it's his character voice i think that's just his normal voice yeah. coming out <laughs> whenever he's Probably. yelling i like the marvel ultimate alliance one i think his name is eric loomis yeah i like him that's the guy who plays him in um marvel vs capcom his heroes marvel vs capcom yeah plays him in all the tv shows too yeah. or current tv shows yeah. and i think i had read that is eric loomis's real voice it just happens that he also happens to sound kind of like robert downey jr <laughs> um, uh, but, people uh, say that a lot i only hear it a little bit if, if, it's like 10 percent robert downey jr to me on earth's mightiest heroes in the beginning of the series they yeah. were definitely going for it uh, more and then he kind of backs it off a little bit and um because you're right, because Ultimate Alliance 3, I noticed, Tony's, especially his lines are like, what if a businessman was also a superhero? Because <laughs> like, a lot of his like one-liners will be like, hold my calls, gotta go fight some yeah, super Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I reschedule and that sort of stuff. I remember all yeah. that. that schedule was... a meeting, Ultron's on the loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. I like that. But now it's just... Uh-huh generic uh this voice actor one lines they fit this voice let's go (laughs) instead of having more of a personality that is unique blue did you play the wars like personal mission yet i did so the fact who technically exists in this universe (laughs) that we could possibly introduce him (laughs) um i mean i I guess i'll 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 tell you the premise to his mission and i feel like most marvel fans will get this in five seconds (laughs) They tell Thor, oh, there's been some strange recordings. And he's like, Psh, I'm from Asgard. What could possibly be strange? A guy who looks and sounds exactly like you is leading a cult in Scandinavia. And, and he's, he's just like, standing at Thor's like, who, who could, could have, have stolen done my this? image and voice? <laughs> he says, what kind of trickery could this be? <laughs> <laughs> and throughout the like, whole, it's like three missions or something. And they keep saying stuff like that. And I'm like, Are, do you? I'm confused on how long yeah, have you been the... Avengers? Have you met your brother yet? Or, like, what's going on? <laughs> and then at the very, very end of, like, the mission chain, after they stop his plans, and, then, like, he looks at, like, these green magical footstep things that are left behind, yeah. and he's like, oh, brother. And I'm like, why did it take you so long? <laughs> like, you... Writing. <laughs> Convenient writing, that's how. It's not, it's just, it felt kind of bad. <laughs> like, yeah. somewhere in between yeah, this, the starting point and this end point, I feel like he should have started getting it, or have gotten it, and we should, we should have arrived here like ten minutes ago. Come on, Thor. You, he's yeah. literally a family member, how does he not pop to mind? How funny would it be? It's not Loki, it's Mysterio. I mean, it technically, <laughs> technically <laughs> it could, like, because it didn't end with, like, a fight with Loki, so it could end <laughs> up being 
Mysterio or something, and I would love that, but it would, <laughs> it is counter to the way they built it up agonizingly. But if they, if they dare yeah. to be like, yeah, we built it up this p- agonizingly slowly just to mess with you, I will, I, <laughs> I will love that. <laughs> Please do that. Because this is one of the few Marvel games I've played where they've done, I don't know what to call it, like a less is more approach with villains. Yeah. Like, I feel like more games are like Ultimate Alliance, where it's like, I'm walking along when Venom and Carnage and Chameleon yeah. and Mysterio all jumped out. Guess we'll have a boss fight. <laughs> like, I... there are, what, four villains in this game, and the scariest one is a mean lady with a taser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like both i mean in ultimate alliance it like i said it is unapologetically a comic book game and i adore that but this one it has the potential to do that but it it's making you wait and it is it's building up and it's i mean all of this is established like the first mission a taskmaster has been around for a while and like abomination has been around for a while so you live in an established universe but it's also allowed to feel itself out and i like both approaches and they're different but i and that's actually like why this game is so special to me because it is more of a fleshed out i am living in a marvel world the ultimate alliance is good but it doesn't have really the space to grow The movies, and I guess now the TV shows, even though it should have been the TV shows before, but wasn't, it uh, it kind of has that space, but also it's not quite the same. I've heard people be like, if this game does really well, we could have something really amazing on our hands where it could go on for like a decade and be sort of World of Warcraft, but with Marvel, and I don't... I don't know how, like, realistic that is. That's, I don't, I would love that, yeah, I think but I don't know if that's that would, possible. I want it to be possible. That would be very weird if this is, like, the only game you have on PS4 or PS5, mm-hmm. and then it's, like, and it's just taking up all your hard drive space <laughs> because of all the added content that, keep, that gets added. I wouldn't added. mind. So it, I would, that was me and Monster Hunter I would love to, year. ten years down the line, and they're like, oh, guess what? We're releasing this Jubilee-specific mission, and I'm like, heck yeah, let me (laughs) gear up my Jubilee and jump into this with my regular crew. I would would adore that. That is my dream come true, and I guess the potential for that is in this game, and I don't know how realistic that is or how close to that we will get, but I for the moment that hope is technically alive and i can dream about it and that is why this game is special to me this is that is why i bought this game knowing that it wouldn't be perfect and it would have flaws and it wouldn't be for everyone but it is for me it's the game i've wanted my whole life and i don't know if there will be another game that will ever be as special to me in that way as this game that is my thoughts on marvel's adventures (laughs) nice what if we just wrapped you out of this podcast (laughs) (laughs) after that heartfelt suit now Hi, Altitude. You said your piece, you and now return to playing the game. <laughs> you relinquished <laughs> your... I went back and I reread this older comic from about 2007 because it made me think of this game, and it was uh, Fallen Sun Issue 3. So this was the Marvel Civil right. War had just ended, um, Captain America was dead, and this was a series where everybody was kind of gripping with his death, and it was done through the lens yeah. of the stages of grieving. And the bargaining issue was the one that I was thinking of for some reason with this game. And so what that one is, it, the plot is basically Iron Man and S.H.I.E.L.D., the, the pro registration team, call up Hawkeye and they say, hey, you know, Captain America's dead, but people still need that right. idea of Captain America. Like, you're good at projectile <laughs> stuff. Um, you know, basically they're like, what if we put the suit on you? You know, you could, pr- you know, in a couple of days, you'll probably be a pro with this S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, I think he even went on a mission, like once, like he stops like a mugging or something like pretty low, you know, nothing too threatening. But it's just that idea of trying to like fill that space, I guess, you know. And even he goes at the end, like, no, I'm, I'm not him. Yeah, I can't and... do this. 
it's funny because the other last game that I purchased was the Samurai Jack game. And it's fun. But it's funny because I think what both of them have is that like these characters are kind of over. Like the Samurai Jack series is over. And I think it's safe to say that for the vast majority of fans of the Avengers, like your favorite is not coming back. I mean, I've watched my two favorite characters in fiction now lay down on the ground and have their loved ones basically, you know, tell them they did a good job and goodbye as they lay there dying. So, yeah, like you were saying with that idea of a a world that, you know, just kind of holding on, getting maybe one more adventure with them. I think that that's uh, something pretty special, too. And you're right, I think it means looking past a couple, you know, some bad mechanics. Um, Maybe the financial stuff will hit me later as more characters come out, but right now it's not hitting me in the face. Like I said, it's like me and Monster Hunter. Another thing that's coming to an end, so all my faves are gone during a time when uh, I don't even know what color the sky is where you guys are right now. So, uh, you know, yeah, just having, you know, make heroes. Maybe it's silly, but just makes it a little easier, you know? Uh, I believe uh, you said the other day that you had just had a moment that made you feel like, ah, yes, this game is worth $60 that I paid for it. Do you remember Uh, what that was? Yes, I remember what it was. It was the Iron Man mission in the campaign where he has to go into the AIM fortress or whatever. And that's and... another moment that calls back to, like, his music and him being cool in the game, is he, yes. he gets, like, his pre-flight <laughs> playlist going on so he can go into space. It's great. I, oh, this isn't the space one, I don't think. This, or oh. maybe it was. Yeah, he he has to go through... It's basically, like... At this point, he's basically an R-Wing from Star Fox. You have to, like, fly through closing doors and, you know, things are shooting at you. Right. But you realize over the oh. course of this level, like lasers are shooting at you then all of a sudden fire is coming out of the sides it's basically turning into a big rock concert yeah tony's playing his music and as these projectiles are coming out and to be honest most of them aren't even aimed at you (laughs) but there is this moment where you realize as you're like barrel rolling out of the way of an explosion yeah it's just a big cheesy you know classic rock you know yeah, it's a KISS concert on wings, basically. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. I At first, I didn't I didn't uh, really get it. I thought it was a regular mission, and so I like flew up to the first few turrets and like started attacking them, and then Jarvis said, you have one minute remaining. And I yeah, was like, you... I looked up in the top left and saw that I had a time limit. It was like, oh my goodness, I have to go. And then <laughs> it was, I was like, it's okay, it's probably really close, because, uh, I mean, these levels can get big, but they're not that big big and so and then i'm flying through like this almost grand canyon-esque like gauntlet of like lasers and missiles and i was like i don't i don't know what's going there's so much happening and it's kind of amazing but i'm also very anxious and and it's just like this huge roller coaster of emotions and i loved it i mean if they're I'm critical of one there's a scene like that early on where Kamala grabs Captain America's shield, and the Hulk chases her, and... He doesn't want her to steal Captain America's shield, because he said he's dead, and so (laughs) Bruce has been stuck as Hulk for five years, from what I can tell. There's a point in that where I admit it got that, like, PlayStation cutscene feel, where, like, part of me knows, like, as she's jumping and, like, automatically blocking and holding things that, like... I'm not really doing much here, but you're right. The high point but of that was... But it also just it feels good. And yeah. some people probably won't like it if, like, some of the more, like, cynical parts of me were, like, this is very manufactured, but mostly I was just like, this is good and I don't care. Let me have fun. <laughs> yeah, I wish we had a little bit more Thor time, especially because he comes... So when you yes. first get him back, he's dressed like a... I think he's supposed to be a hospital volunteer. He's wearing the tag that says Donald Blake, Donald Blake. which is his oh, uh, yeah. alternate identity in the comics. But it's just like he walks in off the street, like almost literally. Like there's stuff happening and he just walks in. And it's just kind of like, oh, hey, Thor. Yeah, like I almost wish we had gotten a little bit more of his time skip life. Like, uh, I haven't delved too deep into all the like uh, intel and stuff that you collect. But from what I have heard, it, yeah. that a lot of like even with like Black Widow, which we do like 
talk a lot about it, uh, but there's, like, a line in the campaign where she tells Kamala, like, you've done more than you know, and that's because if you read her, the intel files that you collect throughout the game, she was, like, doubting the Avengers before A-Day even, she was worried about it all falling apart, and then right as ate it, she was like, okay, I, we're actually doing good in the world, and then A-Day happened, and then A-Day Kamala happened, comes yeah. along, and she's like, you guys, the world needs you, and that doesn't uh, click if you don't read through stuff, and it's, like, kind of a throwaway line, but if you read all the intel, it's actually, like, very good storytelling, in my opinion. Kind of reminds me of uh, Dark Souls, if you've ever played it. Just to make sure we hit the whole trifecta of Chris <laughs> interests here. Um, <laughs> we got the Jerry Lawler reference in, and just an old joke that I have to do for the one person who is going to get all these, Paul, you're welcome. <laughs> but uh, um, one time Paul made a joke in his podcast about me being the only person who would get the topics he was into. But um, uh, but yeah, Dark Souls, if you've ever played, had this really light storytelling. Like You could play beat the whole game and not really know what's yeah. up, but... Um, a lot of it, you're right, is in the supplemental material. Actually, in item descriptions. But you're right, I have not been giving time to reading the Neither the files, have I. But... Knew, I did in, like, the the, like the first day I had it. And then, like, I read uh, Kamala's fanfic, the pieces that I had. It's great. Um, <laughs> I, I'm excited. Yeah. So, the Avengers versus the sewer people, or the, the sewer, sewer people, or whatever they're called. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We were lizards, maybe. I don't quite Super remember, lizard, right. but I, I feel like they wouldn't use the M word in this game. It definitely <laughs> has that uh, 2015, yeah. 2016 Marvel feel of no mutant. You know, no they're trying to make mutants. the Inhumans happen. Yeah, we don't talk about mutants. I would be highly, highly shocked if like the Fantastic what Four was, were even referenced. What was really weird was having Inferno in like two different spots of the game and giving him his powers and not making him playable. That was weird. Uh, there's a kid named Dante who is inhuman. He gets fire powers. His name's Inferno. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> is he the guy with the broken leg? Yes. Uh, and he shows okay. up in A Day. He like helps you like finish your comic book collection. <gasps> and I didn't put that together. Yeah, that's Dante. That's Inferno. He's an actual superhero. And they like bring him up in A Day, and then they bring him up later in the story. And he's a little bit important. He like inspires Kamala to like go out on her own and do the, this very dangerous yeah. mission that no one else is willing to do. And it's like, okay, I have to do it because th- this kid needs me and mm. no one else is helping him. He's a minority now. He's an inhuman and he got hurt and he, he would do this by himself, but he needs someone to do it for him. So, and then they don't like make him playable and it's weird because... He's like maybe down the line if he becomes a big fan favorite, I, but yeah, I hope I'm so skeptical. because he's like one of the first Inhuman heroes I think of aside from Ms. Marvel and the royal family. How bad yeah. or intrusive are the microtransactions in this game? Okay, so people are probably gonna hate me for this, but this is from what I can understand. This is one of like the least intrusive and actually slightly generous i mean i know that like microtransactions are inherently pretty predatory but considering every other video game with my tr- microtransactions ever and how bad they can get this is actually relatively generous relatively generous and i will be able to get everything i want without spending a single penny more on the game because it is basically the only people who will pay money for like microtransactions are people who don't want to play other characters who are absolutely against playing more than like one or two characters and people who are impatient and want every single skin and stuff like right now i mean that's that's their prerogative i I personally will be able to... Yeah, I I haven't had that bad of an experience yet. I think if something... Nothing's been in my face, I'll put it that way. Um, I think the scenario that I could picture in my head would be like if a level popped up and you clicked on it and it went like, whoa, hey now, that's three ninety nine, buddy. Yeah. Like, that would be bad. But It's I mean, actually... Yes, I know that there's a marketplace where you can buy things, but... Um, it's actually kind of saying, hard um, to find, actually. Like, there's like... 
the main menu, and then there's another tab on the main menu where there's the marketplace, and then there's like a sub marketplace for each individual character where most of the stuff you'll be looking for actually is, and that's it can be hard to find if you don't know it's there, and even when you do know it's there, if you don't want to think about it, you basically never think about the it. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about, and we'll see, is they said something about the cards for the future characters. Okay, so, so is that like... the way it works is the challenge cards that you do, like the four, the two daily and two weekly ones, are they're mm -hmm. fully unlocked because they, they unlocked all six main characters premium challenge cards so in the future like when kate bishop comes out you will have her challenge card but basically all the costumes on her card will be locked but the like resources and gameplay like specific stuff are gonna be unlockable and then you like say you get kate bishop to level 40 which is max level on her character card then you spend the 1,000 credits to unlock the premium rewards, boom, you have all the cosmetics that were on the card that you already unlocked. Okay, so that's not too bad. You can think about it as having two separate tracks, or you can think of it as one track that has, like, there's the free ones, and then when you get to a premium one, it's sort of like a blank in the free track, but it is, it's just the one track that you get more rewards for when you... Uh, spend the thousand credits and the thing is by completing the first six characters who like they give you the premium credits they give you i think a thousand three hundred per finishing their character card which is more than enough to unlock the next character so to buy everything. so with okay. the base game you get six thousand credits by playing as the main characters and then so that's enough for the next six characters and more. That's why I say okay. I think that's generosity in the relative sense that modern video games have that. I I will be able to yeah. finish every premium like, challenge uh, card without... Pokemon Go. You can unlock everything. You just gotta be patient. I don't play Pokemon Go, but I will take your word for it. <laughs> Yeah, most of the controversy just strides from it's already a sixty dollar game. Why do you have to charge more it's, for it? The and, thing is, and when I saw the unlockables, I kind of understood the system, but it did the, seem more convoluted than it needed to be. But I, mean, yeah. I could still see, like, it's I could still see it takes just a decent amount of yeah. play time to unlock the stuff that you yeah. Want. Like I think uh, when you do the math, it and takes like that I'm like dying for. Uh, it takes like sixteen, so like four, three or. Four three and a half weeks of doing a character's daily and weekly missions to unlock everything. So that's not that bad, actually. In my previous examples with premium stuff were Pokemon Go, where you get you can buy coins or you can earn coins in the, um, the gym fights. So, like, my joke in Pokemon Go is that I started playing it in October, or when I really, like, got into it. So my first good Pokemon were ghosts, and so I dressed my Pokemon trainer kind of like an undertaker, <laughs> like he's got a suit coat and a big black hat. So I had to earn the coins for that. So yeah, it was just every day I'd get like, you know, my coins from going out and fighting. I actually live by, the other part to this is I live close to a cemetery, so <laughs> I uh, would beat up whoever took over the cemetery and put a Gengar, which is a ghost, in the cemetery mm -hmm. as my uh, Pokemon to defend it. And then I would get coins as people were fighting him. And I, that's like, you know, maybe it was a thousand coins to buy, like, all of my clothes that I wanted so I didn't look like a, a little jogging teenager <laughs> anymore. Um, and you're right, it was just, you know, I took a couple months. Um, actually, it was funny, I was on, uh, that was part of my walking routine with my daughter when I was on... Um, leave with her was we'd walk by the cemetery and do the fights to get the coins and she was in the stroller um so i'm used to that slow route and then um, my other one which i've been mentioning a couple times is um monster hunter which was it's all cosmetic now those you can't get unless you pay but they're silly stuff like haircuts in a game where everybody wears giant armor like <laughs> and to be honest with you with it's funny because i feel like if i were into a game like overwatch maybe i'd be more into the costumes right. but like again the first character i would spend credits on for me is iron man and there aren't that many suits that are calling to me like i'm kind of like i got my red and gold i'm iron man yeah. like 
I thought the the half finished costume in the in you unlock in the story was funny, so I like that. Mm-hmm. I've always liked um, the silver ones, to be honest. The silver ones are cool. There's a blue and yellow one that looks like it's supposed to be a shout out to the rescue suit from the movie. I think um, it. Uh, and, I think sorry. there was also. I think it's also like a color swap of like the original Sin Iron Man suit. I can't. That's in there, I think, already. Because there's a bl- or is that is that the black suit? Because there's like a black. There's a Chroma Lux suit. one that's like black and. I can't remember. There's a copyright safe version of the Mark 42 from <laughs> Iron Man 3, like more that like bronzy, brassy finish as opposed to like gold. Oops. It was actually like in the, the sales store um, the first day I played it. Yeah. But yeah, there's not too many. And again, nothing that I would spend money on, like where I'm like, um, I think I mentioned in the chat, it's funny that one of the name plates, there's a picture of him like sitting on like a robot chair almost like a throne and like his like robot arms are attending to his right. suit and that was actually my cover photo on twitter mm-hmm. for about a year until quarantine my current one is now um mcu tony talking into the helmet in space but um that it, picture was my cover photo so if i ever unlock that that's just gonna stay my nameplate mm-hmm. pretty much yeah. like that's the thing about uh, like cosmetics in games like this is i won't switch between them is often enough to warrant buying a new one like if a new one comes out yeah. that i like more i will put that on but i won't switch between it like every it's mission like before missions you're like blue or red or gold i mean yeah. sometimes yeah it's nice to change it up but i probably already have another costume that i like enough to wear uh, the takedowns are fun Again, not worth purchasing. Those are I've now learned super that everything... interesting in that they, in a very small sense, they do affect gameplay. Like, like one of Kamala's uh, basic ones is she like throws an enemy behind her, and not all yeah. like not all of her takedowns do that. Some of them just like put them on the ground. So it does have a minor like gameplay element to it, which is super interesting. It, it's not supposed to like be a build thing keep them where they yeah are, but yeah. i did see like a post of a short clip of like someone shooting a rocket at kamala the player like turns around grabs one of the guys in the stunned animation and like does the takedown where it throws it behind her and flies him into the rocket thus killing the guy <laughs> and making her Oops. avoid take damage so it's something That's that awesome. the devs are like, yeah, it doesn't affect gameplay, but in a tiny technical way, it does. If she had just slugged him in the yeah. face, she might have taken a rock. So I, I uh, think... It doesn't affect the gameplay itself, but it affects how you Yeah, play. exactly. I just started playing more with Thor uh, before... I was actually playing as him while we were um, getting through the technical issues. Um, oh, yeah? And I was getting pretty good at landing stunts with him. I bought that move where you hold square and he like whirls yes. the hammer like point blank, like a almost like a nunchuck. Yeah. And that seems to look, fill up yes, the stun bar it, really it fast. I only have two. That. Yeah, it, I only have two takeouts for him. So I was just watching the same two things over and over, which was uppercut, grab the leg, lightning bolt him down, and throw the hammer, hammer back, smack him with the hammer. Yeah, I I have a lot of like yeah. little tips for, the, for myself in like. This is how I will play this character. This seems most efficient for my gameplay style, and that's really cool. There are upgrades that, like, just yeah. fundamentally change how you approach everything, and I love it. That's true, yeah, because early on I was trying to get Hulk, I was trying to get more stuns, because the other thing with the takedowns is that you get health back if you pull yes. one off. So I was looking for any move that had stun in the name, but he was beating the enemies faster than I could do it, because I didn't... Early on that lab, I mean... That's kind of like a trial by fire, I would say. <laughs> like the first time I did it, I was dying over. Yes, and I over did it on. Then... I did the entire like beta on brutal difficulty, and that that makes Ooh, you have to learn the game. To, that sir. is part of where like my amazement at constantly relearning how a character works came from. Is because yeah. it's just like oh, I had one of those with Widow when I started with her. Widow is, this is going to sound silly, but Widow's kind of the barbarian of the group or the warrior in MMO terms in that everybody else starts with energy and drains the energy. She's empty and she has to build it up. And she can use her R2 right away, the the grappling hook. You just have to time it right. I thought I had to wait to use it, so I'm not using this counter move that 
would be very helpful. So my play style with Widow is not very necessarily conventional. I like to target the biggest enemy I can and go in with <laughs> with her semi-automatic, I think it is, and shoot them because that does okay. a lot of stun damage relative to her other stuff. And so I use that, I get low on bullets, and then I run in and shoot with the high caliber round to do a bit more damage, and then... The high caliber yeah, round, I, yeah. And so I finish stunning them, and then I take them down. So there, uh, there's nice. going to be a lot of people who focus on, like, the smaller enemies with Widow, because she's very good at taking those out, too. She there's, It just depends on how you want to play, and I that's very cool to me i'm glad that that's one of the high points yeah um we could quickly talk about bugs um i know a lot of people have had been complaining about bugs and that's like a huge controversy in my personal experience i've had like barely anything and the ones that were were like more amusing than game breaking uh one time i walked down a hallway as Thor, and then like flew out of the map into the stars, and so I had to reload <laughs> the checkpoint, which was like 15 seconds earlier. So that's the most obtrusive bug I've gotten, and it was not that bad. I and it happened like once or twice, so I can't really talk, speak to those. Uh, how about how many? Like, has that been a huge problem for you? Cause... I had a bad one in the beta, so I'm going to give them credit that it was the beta and not the proper game. Um, oh, I was yeah, doing I a had mission. a lot of glitches in the beta. <laughs> yeah, I did a mission where it was like, protect the three shield agents from the aim baddies. And um, so I beat all the bad guys in the room, and it just doesn't progress. Like, we're all just staring at each other like, <laughs> okay, you're safe oh, now. I, I... <laughs> like, which door do I go yeah, in? Yeah, I didn't have that even like... once. So yeah, I had that. That was the worst yeah. of it. So I was gonna say, in a big multiplayer game with like tens of thousands of players at a time, and you're gonna, it's like someone's gonna run into something, something eventually. Like yeah. What's, what am I playing on the Switch? My time at Porsche that had a few, but I got it for ten bucks, so I'm not gonna really <laughs> complain about that. I had kind of like your Thor incident. I uh, I think I just fell through the map, and then it wouldn't let me back up, so I lost like a day just hitting the reset button. But other than that, like most games i've had good luck in the past couple years i can't think of anything more serious than that let's i got doom eternal at launch and i fell through the map (laughs) on like day one (laughs) i was was like oops my bad (laughs) guess i should not have looked through that rock (laughs) if if you fall in hell where do you go (laughs) the next level (laughs) the skybox that's where you go (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I hate to say it. Yeah, I'm kind of. I think I, I have to start wrapping this up soon. But this has yeah, really been fun, guys. I, this yeah, was this amazing. Was re- this was really fun. Thank you for listening to this very special episode of the Game Cola Podcast. If you like what you heard, please find us on our actual internet website, GameCola.net, or our YouTube channel, GC.net. The letter G, the letter C, the word dot, the word net. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook at our pages just called Game Cola. And if you want to listen to more of our podcasts, you can find us easily on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And if you want to ask us questions directly, you can also find our Discord, which you can find the link to in our Twitter bio or on our actual internet website. I frequent the uh, Game Cola Discord, so if you ever want to talk to me, you can find me on there. I'm there too. Uh, my name is usually some variant of uh, some sort of play on the word axe. <laughs> it's just my thing. I can't explain it. All right. Uh, in that case, thank you guys for listening. Bye. Thanks. This was really Hope fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Bye, everyone. Ready in three, two, one. Sink? Great. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I was sorry. <laughs> Give me it. This is me actually, start, actually starting to show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Sink. Uh, you're all good. I'm stupid, too. I'll put this in the end. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ready?